The north shore of Lake Superior is a well-known Minnesota vacation spot. With 154 miles of scenic coastline, myriad beaches, and quaint coastal towns, the North Shore offers incredible sights and experiences, from Duluth all the way up to the border of Canada. Its winding scenic highway, Minnesota 61, will take you through tunnels, forested hillsides, and harbor towns, with glimpses of rocky beaches and fantastic cliffsides jutting out into the lake. We have visited the North Shore in every season, and each has something unique to offer. So hop in your car and let's take a road trip, stopping at our top 10 favorite North Shore destinations. No matter who you go with, there's always an adventure awaiting when you visit the North Shore. Are we there yet? Duluth Lift Bridge. Our tour of the North Shore starts in the port city of Duluth, Minnesota, which is a destination in and of itself. Duluth sits on the westernmost point of the Great Lakes and is the world's farthest inland port accessible to oceanic vessels. Duluth has many attractions, but no visit would be complete without a stop at its landmark aerial lift bridge. The bridge spans the Duluth Ship Canal and connects the mainland to Minnesota Point. Originally built in 1905, the bridge used to be what's known as a transporter bridge and carried vehicles and residents across the water on a gondola. The bridge was later reconstructed as a lift bridge, allowing large ships to pass under the roadway as it's lifted 135 feet into the air. There's a park, pier, and lighthouse down near the bridge, as well as a maritime museum. If you time your visit right, you may be lucky enough to see the bridge being raised. As large ships head out under the bridge, listen for the customary horn blowing and wave to the sailors. They may be headed for distant shores on the Great Lakes or even throughout the world. Betty's Pies. By the time you've made it up the North Shore past two harbors, you'll have already passed many beaches, scenic points, and parks. To be honest, it would take forever to name them all. You've probably worked up an appetite by this time with all that driving, and well, you're in luck. Just before crossing the Stewart River after leaving two harbors, there's a local eatery which boasts the best pies in Minnesota. Betty's Pies was started in 1956, when Betty Lassard began selling goodies at her family's fish shack on the North Shore. The menu eventually grew to include standard diner fare, as well as the famous pies. Don't be surprised if you pull into the parking lot at Betty's and it's packed. This is usually the case. I don't think we've ever seen it have a down moment, even in the dead of winter. The food is good, but the pie is really good. The Great Lakes Crunch was our favorite. If you don't have a chance to get to Minnesota anytime soon, don't worry. Betty's will ship their pies nationwide. Gooseberry Falls State Park. Moving on up the North Shore, you'll begin to be impressed by the natural beauty of the area. Houses seem to become less and less, and before you know it, you'll see Gooseberry State Park coming up on your right. The park surrounds the mouth of the Gooseberry River and boasts 20 miles of hiking trails. There's also camping sites, a visitor center, and great fishing. It's perhaps best known, however, for its spectacular waterfalls. There are three main waterfalls in the park which cascade down the mountainside over dark volcanic rock. They're named Upper Falls, Middle Falls, and Lower Falls. Definitely not scoring points in the imagination department. Despite the lackluster names, the falls are more than worth a visit. It's a fantastic place to view wildlife, snap some scenic pics, or go for a hike. We especially love this area in the fall. The day fee to enter the park is just $7, but if you're planning on visiting any other parks, and there are at least two more on our list, you might as well just buy an annual Minnesota Parks Pass for $35. Brooke! <laughs> Iona's Beach. Continuing on up the coast, you won't have to travel very far before you come to one of the North Shore's most unique beaches. Instead of soft sand, Iona's beach is composed entirely of round red rhyolite rocks. Say that five times fast. The rock comes from nearby cliffs, and each one has been rounded and smoothed by the endless waves and winds from Lake Superior. Besides being just cool to look at, Iona's beach has a musical secret. If you listen very carefully as the waves crash against the shore, the beach makes a tinkling sound as the rocks tumble and slide over one another. Iona's Beach is one of Minnesota's specially designated scientific and natural areas because of its unique features. 
Split Rock Lighthouse. In the winter of 1905, almost 30 ships were wrecked on Lake Superior from a monster storm named the Matafa Storm. One of the ships sank just north of the present day Split Rock Lighthouse, which was built in response to the tragedy. Today, Split Rock Lighthouse is retired, but you can still visit the beautiful structure and surrounding state park. Split Rock Lighthouse is considered one of the most picturesque lighthouses in the country, sitting atop a 133-foot sheer cliff looking out over Grand Lake Superior. It's a great place to take photos and enjoy the waves crashing against the scenic shoreline. For the best views, you'll want to walk the short trail to the right of the lighthouse and descend the stairs that go down to the historic pump house. So Split Rock Lighthouse is a cool historical site that you can come see here on the North Shore. It's a state park and a state historical site. So to go on the actual grounds of the lighthouse costs $8 per person. Um, but just to get into the park, you can just pay the state park entrance fee or if you have a state parks pass, you can get in uh, with that. There's a trail that runs along the shore where you can get some amazing views of the lighthouse. Honestly, we didn't pay the $8 per person to go up and see the lighthouse. We didn't feel like it was worth it. We got all the great views that we needed along the seashore trail. So, great place to come and visit. It's really cool, especially beautiful at sunset. Black Beach. Next on our list is another of the North Shore's unique beaches. As you near the beach, you may be surprised to see a giant mining facility called Cliffs, bellowing water vapor out of its gigantic smokestacks. The facility processes iron ore, and is actually responsible for the beautiful location we are about to visit. As its name implies, Black Beach is, well, black. This is because it's made entirely of taconite, a low-grade iron ore that used to be considered a waste rock. So the Black Sand Beach is another of the North Shore's interesting places to visit. This beach, the sand on it, it's actually kind of little pebbles more than sand. <laughs> But it's made of taconite, which is, nice. which is a magnetic um, rock. And basically, this beach was formed because the mining company that's next to this beach just kept dumping their tailings in the lake, and eventually it formed this black beach. They mine iron ore over there. But it's a pretty cool place. It actually didn't used to be public. It was a private beach, and people kept sneaking in. And so finally they worked with them to make it a public beach and you can now come here and enjoy it. You'll notice as you pull into the beach parking lot that there's also campgrounds here, but we'll get to camping in a bit. Lutzen Mountain. Believe it or not, the largest ski resort in mid-America with four mountains and 95 runs is right here on the North Shore. Although it doesn't compare in elevation to anything out west, Lutzen can hold its own, and not just in the winter. When the weather's nice and the hills are green instead of white, there are still downhill thrills to be had. All right, we are on the Lufton, Lofton Mountain Alpine Slides. This should be fun. They had to dry off the track because it rained a little, so <laughs> it's a little, little scary, but this should be fun. Brooke and I are gonna go together, right, Brooke? Mm -hmm. Going up. Yeah. Look, there's everyone down there coming up behind us. No, 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 Brooke, stay here. Put your sleds. Okay. All right. I'm gonna go down this track. This is gonna be awesome. All right, we're green. Oh, we made it. All right, it was so fun the first time. We just had to do it a second time. So here we are, second run. All right, we're going. Okay. I 
got it. State Park. Going all the way up to the tippy top of the North Shore as far as you can go, before entering Canada that is, will bring you to Grand Portage State Park. Why come all the way up here you ask? Well, Grand Portage just happens to be the home of Minnesota's tallest waterfall. All right, we are in Grand Portage State Park and we are right at the very tippy top of Minnesota right against the Canadian border. You can't go really any higher without crossing the border. But there's a beautiful waterfall here, so we're gonna go check it out. To get to the waterfall is a short one mile round trip hike, which is also fully wheelchair accessible. The waterfall is aptly named High Falls and plummets 120 feet over dark, craggy rocks. You may notice a viewing platform on the other side of the river when you visit. Make sure to wave to our northern neighbor, because that is Canada. The rest of Grand Portage is beautiful, and there's a real sense of peace there. As far as amenities, Grand Portage is a day-use only park, and has picnic tables, a welcome center with Ojibwe cultural displays, and an additional hike to another of the Pigeon River's waterfalls, named Middle Falls, Winter Waterfalls. Speaking of waterfalls, our ninth North Shore activity isn't as much about one single place as it is about visiting during the right season. So you know, the North Shore has things to do year round. Whether it's the summer or whether it's the winter time, there's always great fun to be had. In the winter, you've got things like snowmobiling, snowshoeing, cross country skiing. There's a ski resort. There's all sorts of fun things to do. It's definitely worth a visit any time of year. If you think you can stand the cold, why not consider visiting some frozen waterfalls? The North Shore has many waterfalls, a few of which we've already mentioned. And if conditions are right, those waterfalls will freeze. Places like Gooseberry Falls State Park take on a whole new personality in the wintertime. We braved temperatures of negative 11 degrees Fahrenheit. That's negative 23 degrees Celsius, just to go out and see them and I think it was totally worth it. <laughs> Camping. Last but not least on our list is another activity that you can find all up and down the North Shore, and that is camping. There are places to camp everywhere up here, both in state-operated parks and forest lands, as well as privately operated campgrounds. Camping is always an adventure, and what better way to take in some of the beauty of the North Shore than spend time in it? If you're really looking to get off the beaten path, though, why not consider a canoe or kayak trip through the famous Boundary Waters, accessible just over an hour inland from the North Shore? If you haven't heard of the BWCA before, definitely check out our video about it. Well, that's it. 10 amazing things to do and see on Lake Superior's North Shore. Did we miss your favorite? Let us know down in the comments what you like to do on the North Shore. Give us a thumbs up if you found this video useful. And as always, please consider subscribing. We'd love to have you along on our million adventures. Are we there yet? I think I'm so lonely.